What's up, my people? This is Mr. Tui, creator of the SAT Crash Course series. And if you're looking for an SAT math review on graphing linear equations, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve a variety of SAT math questions involving graphing linear equations in y equals mx plus b form. Oh, and by the way, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future updates. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy this SAT math review, graphing linear equations. Uh, we are at Owen. Owen, go ahead and read question number one for me, please. Uh, which of the following is an equation of line L in the XY plane? Oh, boy. Do you know the answer to this one, Owen? I hope that you see it right off the bat. Maybe not. I think it's D. What do you guys think? Remember we talked about y equals mx plus b form, right? And this is on the rules for mathing, right? m is the slope, the rise over the run, and then b is the y-intercept. So let's start with, let's, I always love starting with the y-intercept, the b value, right? In y equals mx plus b form, right? y equals mx plus b. What is the y-intercept here, Owen? Um, y equals uh, 1, x equals 0, oh wait, no, um. Well, just what's the y-intercept? Where does the line, where, where does the line cross the y-axis? What's the y-value when the line crosses oh, the y-axis? Um, one. That's that one, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So even if, without worrying about the slope, we know the answer is, uh, or it's y equals mx plus one. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's the slope? What's the rise? What's the run? Um, like one. Yeah, the, the slope is one, right? Because you're going up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, right? Yeah. Always pay attention to the units, right. by the way, on the x-y-axis. Here, every square is one. So we're lucky. Sometimes it's not. You know, if this was like a 2 here instead of a 1, we'd be talking about a different slope. So pay attention to the units. That's hugely important. But y equals 1 over 1, x plus 1. 1 over 1 is just 1. x times 1 is just x. So y equals x plus 1. Answer choice D. We're 100% right. Any questions about that? No. No? This is familiar, right? Yep. Yeah. I still want to, you know, it's a specific concept that, you know, so, you know, that didn't, doesn't involve some of the strategies from the level one course. So I want to go over it, and we're going to need this for some of the, the trickier questions with graphing. Uh, but good job, Owen, nonetheless. Let's keep rocking and rolling. Question number 12. Go ahead, Hannah, read this for me, please. Question number 12. A line in the xy plane passes through the origin and has a slope of 1 over 7. Which of the following points lies on the line? Okay. Um, I've got, on the rules for mathing, I've got a, a rule on graphing. The first one says, if you can graph it, just graph it. Okay, so let's graph it. <laughs> uh, we get, they've given us some information to graph this. So let's. I'm going to make a little dump, you know, dumpy uh, x y axis here. I'm not looking for perfection. We don't need it. Um, but I want to graph this. It says it passes through the origin. Do you guys know what that means? The origin. What does that mean, Hannah? Uh, the center. Yeah, the center. Right. It's point zero comma zero. Right here at that point. That's one of the points. And it tells us it has a slope of 1 over 7. So what do we do with that? You go to the right one and go up 7. Um, well, what is slope? Rise over run. Slope is rise over run. So if it is... Oh, so it's also... It's, it's up 1 over 7 if it's rise over okay. run, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, rise over run, absolutely. So let's go up one, go over seven. That gives us another point. Let me see you do that real quick on the whiteboard, please. Okay. So you go up one. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like right here. Absolutely. Up one over seven. Beautiful, great. You got two points. You got a line, Hannah. You've got a line. So let's draw that line real quick. Okay. Beautiful, right? Now remember, the line really extends all the way across, right? It's not just between the two points. It's all the way across, okay? So let's see which points lie on that line. Uh, let's test the answer choices. Let's test the answer choice A. Zero comma seven. Is that on the line? No. No, that's crazy. Where is zero comma seven? It's right here. 
Uh, that's where the x value is. Oh, you're mixing up your x and y values here, Hannah. Remember, it's x comma y. Which means the x value would be 0 and the y value would be 7. Oh, okay. Yeah. So where is 0 comma 7? Like here. Absolutely. Guys, does that make sense why that's 0 comma 7? Yeah. It, it might be more like up here. But, I mean, same, same concept. It's not on the line. Right? Does that make sense why that's 0 comma 7? The x value there is 0 and the y value is 7? Does that make sense, guys? Yes or no? I need some feedback. Yes, yes. no? Yes. Yeah, we're good? Okay, great. And I got to make sure that you can hear me. <laughs> All right. Uh, what about answer choice B? Can you test that for me? One comma seven, Hannah. Okay. So that'd be one, two, seven. Would be like right here. Yep. Is that on the line? No. No, that's crazy. What about seven comma seven? So A and B are going. Let's try C. Be like. Yeah. Is that on the line? No. No. Also crazy. I sure hope it's answer choice D. 14 comma 2, is that going to be on the line? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be your best bet. Now, again, my, I've got a really wonky line, and maybe like a better line would be like, you know, it would be, have a slope that's a little bit less steep, more like that. But yeah, that would get 14, 2 would be like over here, or something like that, closer to that. Any questions about that? No? Guys, every, I would say the <coughs> The majority of students pick answer choice B. Do you see why the majority of students would pick answer choice B? Because yeah. they think of it in the reverse. Yeah, yeah. But it just looks right. And you're like, oh, this looks rise and run. So it's kind of one. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. But you're mixing up the rise and run. Just graph it, man. It's not that complicated. Graph it. Always graph it if you can. Make sense? Yeah? Yep. We're good? Okay, great. That's it. So we are at Nicole. Nicole, can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead and read number nine for me, please. All right. Um, Kx minus 3y equals 4, 4x minus 5y equals 7. In the system of equations above, k is a constant and x and y are variables. What value of k will the system of equations have no solution? Mm, okay. For what value of k will the system of equations have no solution? Okay. Um, let's go to the rules for mathing real quick, because this directly relates to this one, where there's the whole thing about pay attention to the units on the x-y axis. That's important. It is the fourth bullet point. Go ahead and read that fourth bullet point for me, please. Um, that be solve systems of equations. Uh, do you see it on the, on the, am I sharing my screen? Do you see it? Oh, oh, I see it now, yeah, sorry. Um, that be the parallel line? Yes. Parallel lines have the same slope. This is the principle that they're testing you on here, that parallel lines have the same slope. And here's the deal. It may not be super obvious when you read the question at first, but it says, what value of k will the system of equations have no solution? Okay? If we've got a, if we've got a system of equations, we've got two lines, right? And there's no solution. That means they've got the same slope. Because lines with the same slope don't intersect. Right? Because if they had different slopes, then they'd intersect at some point, and that would be the solution to the system of equations where they intersect. But here, they, there's no solution. So it's code for saying we've got two lines with the same slope. Does that make sense? Yes or no, Nicole? Yes. Everyone else, does that make sense? Yes. If we're talking about a linear system with no solution, we're talking about lines with the same slope. Okay? All right. So let's... Um, basically what I want to do here, and I want to see you do it, Nicole, can you put these two equations up here into y equals mx plus b form, and let's try to find the value of k that gives us the same slope. Does that make sense? Let me see you do that. I love it. You're already you're subtracting kx from both sides. Beautiful. Great. And you're going to divide both sides by negative 3. I love it. Yeah, 
minus 4 over 3. I'm going to rewrite this for you. I'm going to rewrite it as, you're, this is 100% correct. I'm going to rewrite it as k over 3 times x minus 4 over 3. Just because it's real clear now, k over 3 is the slope. Okay? This is right as well. But I just want to make it really clear that the slope, the m value, is k over 3. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yep. Do the same thing for the bottom equation. This is perfect. Guys, does it make sense what she's doing here? Yeah? Okay. Beautiful. Subtracting negative four x on both sides. I'm going to have to scooch over to the left-hand side a little bit. I can move the screen too. You're doing great. Dividing both sides by negative five. Does it make sense, guys, what she's doing? Yeah? It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. So remember, these these have the same slope. So we know that k over three has to be four over five. Does that make sense? Whatever k is, k over three must equal four over five. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Questions about that, guys? No? Yep. Okay. And they've got to have the same slope if there's no solution to the system of equations. All we've got to do now is solve for k. How do we solve for k? Uh, can you cross multiply? You can cross multiply, absolutely. What does that give us? Cross multiply, multiply. Yeah. 5k equals 12. What's k going to be? We're so close. She's going to divide both sides by 5 here. Oh, <laughs> you're good. Uh, if you want to undo, just press Sorry, the undo. Un I can't move my screen very well. Yeah, it yeah. Should be 12 over 5. It's 12 over 5. I got you. 12 over 5. Does that make sense, guys? K is 12 over 5. What's the correct answer choice here? You see it? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, a. Answer is A. There it is. Questions about that? No. Questions. No questions. Uh, look, super complicated. If you don't know that they're testing you on the concept that systems with no solution are parallel for linear equations, but if you know that, then you kind of know the direction to take the question in, or the solution at least. Okay? Are we good? Be on the lookout for that. If it says they have no solution, we're talking about uh, parallel lines. By the way, if it says that they have uh, infinite solutions, we're talking about the same line. Does that make sense? If it says infinite solutions? Yes or no? Does yes. that make sense? The same line, right? They're overlapping each other. So be on the lookout for that too. Okay. I think I've got that rule somewhere. Um, systems of equations, I think. Um, okay, good. Let's do a couple more. So we are at Owen. Can you read this one for me, please? Rule uh, or question number sixteen. Which of the following represents the relationship between H and C? H and C. Okay. Now notice this is on the x y axis. Here is really just, it's a it's a H and C axis, right? The x value is H and the y value is C. Do you guys see that on the graph? Yeah. Yeah. They're asking you for the equation in y equals mx plus b form, right here, okay? So let's do what we did before. Let's find, let's find the, um, let's find the, uh, the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept here, Owen? Um, zero, five. Yeah, so five, right? That's the y-intercept, right? Cross the y-axis at five. So, um... So um, already I can eliminate two answer choices that don't give me a y-intercept of 5. Which answer choice can I eliminate? Um, a and B. A and D are gone. Easy. It's either B or C. Now all we got to do is find the slope. What is the slope? 3. 
Uh, you're going up three, right? So you're going from here to here, right? You're going to these, those two points. Yeah. We go up three and over how many? One. Up three over one. One unit. Guys, look at that. Up three over one. Not over four. Do you see that? Up three over one. Do you remember this one from the last time, Owen? Yeah. Yeah, and I taught it to you by plugging in values, and the plugging in values works great here for this one. But remember, pay attention to the units. I'm so glad you took that lesson away. The units on the x-axis, not the you're not counting squares. I've got in my rule. Always pay attention to the units. Don't count the squares. Count the units. Does that make sense, guys, why the slope is 3 over 1? Up 3 over 1. Do you see it? Yeah. They love messing with you on this. I, I see it all the time. Be on the look. Never trust the units on the x-y axis. Never. Never, ever, ever, ever. What's the correct answer here, Owen? C. C. Beautiful. Questions? We're good? Okay. Let's keep rolling. Questions number, question number 11. Go ahead and read this one for me, please. Uh, Nicole. Um, negative 2x plus 3y equals 6. The xy plane, the graph of which of the following equations is perpendicular to the graph of the equation above. Aha, uh -huh. okay, great. Well, I've got, well, look, it's a graphing question. Go to the rules for mathing on graphing. I've got a section here on perpendicular lines. Go and read that fifth bullet point, please. A perpendicular line has a negative inverse. Negative inverse, right? Do you know what inverse means? Yes. What? Yes, it's just flipping the numbers. Yeah, flipping the numerator and the denominator, right? So if, if one line has a slope of 2, the perpendicular line would have a slope of the negative inverse, so negative 1 over 2. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yes. Okay, great. All right, well... Um, so all we got to do now is find the slope of this line and then find out what the negative inverse of that slope is, right? How do we find the slope of the line in the question? Um, change it into y equals y x equals mx plus, plus b form. Let me see you do it. Absolutely. Let me see you do it. Well, do you want me to do that on the screen? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. She's added 2x to both sides. Beautiful. Love it. divide both sides by 3, right? So the slope is 2 over 3. So what's the negative inverse slope going to be? And that would be 3 over 2. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know what the, the well, I don't know what, the, we don't know what the y-intercept is going to be exactly. Yeah, plus b. I love it. Okay, great. So all we've got to do is find the answer choice that gives us negative 2, negative 3 over 2 for the slope. Which one is that going to be? Can we... Let's figure out what the slope is for each of the answer choices. Do you want me just to change all of them? Yeah, if you can. <laughs> all right. Um, so first one would be... Oh, oh, well, there we go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Ta-da! Good. I wasn't sure that was going to work out. That does, yeah. There we go. Great. Nice choice, hey. Questions about that? No. No? Okay. 